We're going to study the Bible today. We're going to look at the interesting word. And not everywhere in the Bible, but we're going to look at the word trust. And when you look and see the word trust, in the Old Testament, the word trust gives us the definition of faith. Faith and trust. Right now you can't see me, but I have faith that this chair that I'm sitting in is going to hold me up. And the faith is I am trusting this, this chair. As we go through life as Christians, we are to put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ. God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We have to have faith and trust in the King James Bible. In the whole chapter, you know, Hebrews 13, or 11, I forget, 11 or 13, about faith and people who had extra, extra faith and what became of that faith that there are so many in the Bible that there are so many that it just gives a list of me. Or it gives a list of what happened to people and what they endured. That we have to trust in God. And we look at these Bible verses we'll, we'll see what the, the context is as far as I just lost me. <laughs> In 2 Samuel 22, 3, the God that we will test in Jehovah of my rock, that rock, according to Paul in Corinthians, is Jesus Christ. So that rock, Jesus, is God Jehovah, and God Jehovah, with the Old Testament, and Jesus, the rock, they're one and the same. So if you were to go out and say that Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus, you would be a liar. You would be a cult. Because Jesus, yes, he was human. And he was God. And David said, hey, the God of my rock, now, I know God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, and yet there is a level that God is higher than Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In that order. And yet they're one. And yet they're three. The God of my rock in him, God and the rock, and for us Christians today, that would be God the Father and Jesus. In him will I trust there is that word. I am going to put my faith what I am trusting, depending on But I am going to believe the care and love from the rock and from God. I'm not going to put my trust in science. I'm not going to put my trust in education. I'm not going to put my trust in uh, politics. I'm not going to put my trust in finances. I'm going, put, I'm going to put it in God's hands. I am put the trust in Jesus' care. I am going to go before God and go before Jesus and the Holy Spirit in prayer and say, there is this problem. And I'm going to tell the Lord and I'm going to trust the Lord to take care of it. 
how he will take care of it. It may not be what I think. Because the trust and the faith that you put in God, not always will it be what you want. You see, God is not a bubblegum machine that you put your plant water in and you get that red gumball. You put that quarter in, you may get a purple. You may get a white one. The machine may be broken and you don't get any. Trusting in God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And there's many religions and there's many thoughts of the brain that their trust is in other things besides God. And even for Christians, I would say, it may come to the point that they are putting their trust in a sports team, a financial issue, and not God. We'll see that later. He is my shield. All right, trust. So you got a soldier, he goes out to battle. He has an instrument called the shield, and that will protect him from arrows and swords. He's going out there believing that shield is going to protect him in battle. The same reference would be to God. God's going to take care of me. God is going to protect me. That's what the shield is. Never do you take the shield, or less often do you take the shield, and you use it as an uh, offensive tool. It's a defensive tool. It's for protection. Uh, God, he's protection. Again, it may not be the color of bubble gum we want. Or we may not get a gumbo. And that's the thing you got to do with, with God is you got to trust that he is going to answer your prayer, my prayer, to his liking, to his eternal knowledge, to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of time. You see, God sees tomorrow. God sees next year. I don't. There's been many, many mistakes I have made in my life. I am 55 years old. I got bad health conditions because of myself. I can only blame myself. And there's been many times I have made wrong decisions. Because I, I went into the world without the shield. And that shield is faith. According to what Paul says. The shield of faith. Trust. David says. There's that, there it is again. Trust and faith. Faith and trust. What's the definition of faith? Trusting. What's the definition of trust? Having faith. Reliance. And you're looking at a defensive. You don't use your faith to, to attack. Somebody comes up to you and they, and they give you their religious nonsense. It's your faith and your belief and trust in what God said. You better make sure you know what God said. The horn, that's the strength of an animal. Men are always looking for deer antlers. It's a prize. They call it a rack. The horn of my salvation. God, the rock that he trusts in. And the defensive shield of faith is the strength and the power of his salvation. Now today, I can't say 
my salvation. David could. Old Testament souls could. Because their salvation was based on works. They had to do something to be right with God. You know what? They, they did not have the eternal promises we had. They actually didn't know about uh, judgment, raptures, where the dead go. It's not to Luke that we find out that the rich man in hell is able to talk and he's in torments. You find nothing of a personal testimony of someone in hell. Samuel's dead. And he tells Saul, Tomorrow you shall be with me. Well, Saul did not go, go to Abraham's bosom. He died in rebellion against God. So he didn't go to Abraham's bosom. He went, he went on the other side of that door to a place called hell. He had no salvation because he didn't do anything he was supposed to. Christians today, on this side of Calvary, it's not my salvation, it's God's salvation. It is the work of Jesus Christ. It is the gift of God. I did nothing to be saved. I can't claim what David says, my salvation. I can claim I would say, the God of my Lord Jesus, in him will I trust, he is my shield, yes. Paul says we got a shield of faith, the horn of his salvation. Today, on this side of Calvary. My high tower. Well, the high tower would be built up on a rock. The high tower would be a lookout. In the city, upon the walls. This tower was a high structure. Think of a lighthouse. And this tower would be where the soldiers will have weapons. They will stay in their room. And there's a time that David was coming to the end of the battle of Absalom's death. And David's in the city. And there, there is the man on the tower. I see this guy there. I see this other guy running. And another instance in the back, you see a guy reporting from a tower that here's Jehu, he drives fiercely. So it's a lookout to see. I mean, you know what the problem with the Mexican border is? We don't have no towers. We can't see them crossing. Here in Florida, where I live, we don't have no t towers to, to look at. But, you know, when the Cubans are... Anybody else comes to this country, okay, then you can't stop them. There's no lookouts. David is saying, I have a shield. I have a horn. I have a high tower. I'm looking out. I, 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 see what's going on. It is God that's up there looking for my protection. It is God that puts that shield of faith to protect us. David had a time in his life that he trusted one stone with no weapons but a slingshot. That was a trust in God. That was faith in God. Not the rocks. David never gave those rocks any credit. He gave God the honor and glory. My refuge is a place that, that you can run to. You know why he's a refuge? You know why I'm, I'm a refuge? You're a refuge. There are times in our life that we step out of the, the city. We leave the city walls. We go out in the world. And we do worldly things. And we sin. And we go against the character that the new creature that we are. And we get in trouble in the world. And the world gives us trouble. And we got to run back to Jesus. We got to run back to the Father. And we got to confess what we've done. And it's like a city of refuge. 
You went in that city for protection. We went to God with our prayers all right. And it's it's too bad that there are many Christians, even myself, I have done and gone and made decisions outside the city walls of God. My Savior, that's Jesus. For us, thou saveth me from violence. Now, violence is caused by man. It's not caused by God. You say, well, you know, these, these volcanoes, these, we got these uh, uh, quicksand, the beaches, we got these hurricanes, we got the earthquakes. That's your fault. That's my fault. People die. Well, the wages of sin is death. And if somebody goes into hell, well, you didn't want really to do what God told you to do. And that's rebellion against God. And you got to bring that to God. You can't bring it to a priest. You can't bring it to Mary. you got to bring it through the salvation of the cross of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. The gospel. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no access to the Father. Second Kings eighteen five. Second Kings eighteen five. He trusteth in the Lord, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, as Jehovah. He trusteth in the Lord God of Israel. Now it says in John that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. When you check the genealogy of Mary, Luke 3, I believe it is. That runs all the way back to Abel. The adopted father, Joseph, his lineage line goes even back to the kings. David. So you better have the God of Israel. You better not have the God of Rome. You better not get the God of Af Afghanistan or the gods of India or the gods of Russia. You don't want the gods of the Jehovah Witness and the gods of the Mormons. Jesus Christ wasn't right. He wasn't a Gentile. Jesus Christ has seen the church, a black church in New London. All, all the pictures of Jesus, the same glass windows of, of the apostles are all black. No, he wasn't black. Jesus Christ was Jewish. Given the life in the womb of a Jewish woman. He was brown skinned, black hair. A lot of people are going to be surprised when they really see Jesus. But they're not going to expect him to be what they think he is. And that all these pictures of Jesus in, in the art and in Facebook and, and you know, Wikipedia and all that, that's not Jesus. We are given descriptions of Jesus a few places in the Bible. And that don't match the page. I mean, the, the Gentile painters, the Italians, and all that, of course they're going to paint Jesus to their liking. But God is not to your liking. God is to his liking. So, you're, and there are people out there, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I just love Jesus. You better be careful because Paul says in Corinthians 11, the 
is another Jesus. There is a Jehovah Witness Jesus. That's not God. There's a Jesus of the Mormon Church. That you know, you you die and you get married and you're an angel. You are an angel and yes, I'm going to plan out. It's nonsense. There's a Roman Catholic Jesus that sits in, in Rome on, on the sea. And he gives the rules and the sayings of the words of the whole church. And he actually overrides what the Bible says. You've got... You need to know that there are other Jesus out there and they got him as you know, Gentile, they got him as Hamite, they got him as everything that he's not. And Jewish people are short. I mean, I think Jesus would be would be short, brown skin, black hair, and very muscular. I mean, that guy walked up mountains. That guy walked from city to city. He walked wherever he went. And yeah, he, he rode on asses, and, and, but he said, no, places he had to walk. And you read all the walking they do in the Bible. You're, gonna, you're not going to be a fat diabetic such as I am. You know, I can't even walk without my walker. Or I'm going to fall flat. So I want you to see that you trust the Lord God of Israel. If your Jesus is not Jewish, you got the wrong Jesus. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. And we got Second Kings eighteen. Twenty one. Now behold thou trustest upon the staff of the booze weed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man leave when the booze weed, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust him. There are people today, 2024, their love and their trust is for Donald Trump. Donald Trump is, according to them, you know, make America great. He's going to save America. Well, he already had four years. He didn't do much. For you... Whether you are saved or you are lost, if you are going to put your faith in any politician, Democrat or Republican, Republican or Democrat, whatever office it is, you got full trust in your husband, full trust in your wife, you got full trust on your job, the boss. That you're going to live from paycheck to paycheck. And you may go into, and I know this has happened. I can give you a But you go to work one day, and they hand you this piece of paper saying, you know, we sold the company up. We're going for layoffs. Uh, I just read there's a pizza, there's a famous pizza place. They're starting to close their doors. Well, what about all the workers? They put their trust in the company they became a company employee or it closed up. What do you do with politicians? And they, they get into the office, they win the vote, and they lie. And they get into crookedness. Get your trust, get your faith, get your dependence on men. In a political office, whether it be a president, king, mayor, governor, whoever. Right. They may be the, the, the leader of your country, 
you are to pray for them, you are to support them, according to the Bible. You do not make fun of them, you do not cuss them, you do not talk against them. You are violating the Bible, you are ranking on and insulting Joe Biden. He is our president, whether you like it or not. There are going to be people out there, that if Donald Trump wins or somebody else wins, they're not going to like it because they like Joe Biden. What happened to Jesus? You know why this, you know, they say God bless America. There is absolutely no way. You can't bless a nation that supports and legalizes uh, abortion, sodomite living, they give you a jail sentence for murder, and the Bible says that whatever case, whatever dispensation you are in, if you kill somebody, you are to be murdered if it was done purposely with the intention. America does not see it like that. Donald Trump is not going to save America. He can't save you. During his presidency, if he gets the four years, people are going to die and they're going to go to hell. And Donald Trump will have no power of getting them out of hell. And let me tell you, I don't know. Maybe he is saved. I don't know. But if he's not saved, He's going to make America great again. If he's not saved, and I don't know, he will die and go to hell himself. And if he ends up in hell, well, he could even save himself. If he ends up in heaven, if he is saved, he got there by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I don't know where the state is. It says, But if you say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, Jehovah. Is it not that he whose high places, whose altars Hezekiah has taken away? Well, you see what happened was, the Jews in Judah had all these places of worship. They had all these gods. They were worshiping the, the astrology. They were opening up the newspaper and putting their faith in the horoscope. And there are people who do that. There are people who run the psychics. And the tarot cards or uh, the bumps on the head or however it's done, they put their faith in. Listen, when Ronald Reagan was the President of the United States, the Secret Service said that there was no plan made, except Nancy Reagan met with her advisor, her spirit advisor, and he would say yes or no, it would be faith for Ronald Reagan to do what he was going to do. Well, I don't know what happened. What happened to that spirit advisor when he was shot? And was it Hickory? Ended up, I believe, in, I believe that was his name. Ended up in a wheelchair for his entire life. That wasn't faith in God. There are people like me, and some days I forget. There are days like me, I will go first to the bathroom. And I would go in my room, I would sit in my bed on my chair, I can't feel no more. And I will ask God to bless his day, I will ask God to help me to be what he wants me to be. That when I do get to heaven, I just want to hear, I want to hear, well done. And I will ask God, by prayer in the morning, for him to activate my day. And help me stop certain sins. What was going on in Judah? They had all these gods and they had all these churches. 
Today they declare Protestant, uh, Jehovah Witness, Mormon Tabernacle, Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, and one of the other denominations. Every, I mean, uh, you won't, I won't believe sometimes we've got to take different roles because of roadblocks and whatever. I can't believe that the roles that we have given since 2011 when we came to Daytona Beach, I can't believe how many churches are in Daytona Beach. And yet there are more liquor places than churches. And one guy, one church, one pastor, he was bragging about how great those churches. And I said, well, what's that place up the road on the right hand side? Mm -hmm. you know, there's, a, there's a bunch of places. I said, isn't there like a biker bar? Yeah, there's a, you've got enough power, you couldn't close that bar down. Listen, when we had the great awakening in America with Whitefield, Whitefield, Bars were closed down, torn up, and they would turn it back, or they turn it to a Baptist church. They would have to start serving God in that Baptist church, in that uh, Methodist church. I mean, most of the time, Methodists were good. But there were so many guys that the Gentile, you, know, you, you, you tore down all, all the, the religious buildings. See, it's buildings. You tore up all the statues. You don't put the horoscope on them. And you say you're to worship this one God. What about the other gods you have? And people will recall that in your life when you get saved. Well, didn't you used to do this? Didn't you use to smoke? Didn't you used to tell dirty jokes? Yeah, I gave that all up. So I'm a new creature. But people look at me, listen, I was I was a Polish Roman Catholic. I was not the boy that you would want me to play with your, your child. I am surprised and I thank God that he kept me from jail. Because there were a couple times I could end up in jail. Many times. There should be times I should be in a hospital bed for years. I should be paralyzed. Maybe in death. Listen, my, my brother, I'm 55, born in 56. I think my brother lived to 53, I think he does, and died of a heart attack in the emergency room. I got practically almost the same stuff he had, but he was even more worse. As far as I know, he lived a cleaner life than I lived. From what you saw with him, right, he was black. Me, I was the black chief of the family. I'm the one that's running around road racing, road racing, Smoking pot, buying alcohol, and all that. And one day, April 25th, 1987, I became saved by the salvation of Jesus Christ. And my life was changed. But I still have people who know me and say, well, What about that? I got rid of this God. I have Jesus. And they look at me like, this is Hezekiah. You got rid of all those gods, and you got just one God. 
buddy, I know, I know what you did. I know the life that you did. And you're telling me you can't answer with heaven. Why? Because I put my faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I left the pulpitry of the Pope of the Catholic Church to the Jewish Savior Jesus, who is a gift of the Father of God. And it was the Holy Spirit that brought me into what Jesus did for me. It was the Holy Spirit that bent my heart to be saved. That's my faith and trust. You know what Hezekiah verse 30? Make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. And this city shall not be delivered to the hand of the king of Syria. And God protected him. Do you have enough faith that God, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will deliver you? Will take that shield of faith Trust. Be on that lookout tower. Upon the foundation of Jesus, the rock. Who is Jewish? Is that the Jesus? Or do you have a non biblical Jesus? Well, he just got along with everybody, and I heard one. He used to smoke dope with all the people and, you know, he just partied and all that. That's not my Jesus. Well, then he turned water into wine. Yeah, but he didn't drink it. And wine in the Bible, since it was freshly made, would have been just grape juice. That's new wine. If you know your Bible. Sometimes the worst news that Hezekiah got that the king of the city is coming to attack with all his armies. Maybe all, maybe all the bill collectors are coming after you. Maybe there are, there are crimes that you've committed and the law is coming after you. Maybe a spouse or a divorced spouse Maybe they're going to come after you. Maybe your children are going to come after you. Or your boss. Or your co-workers. And you're, you're, going to, you're going to trust Jesus to help you get out of this. Oh, yes. Sometimes it's only Jesus that can see. I get often enough CHS. It's, it's almost... It's a later heart attack. My heart is good. My heart is healthy. It's my kidneys have gone bad. And I'm at the... If, if there's a line, if there is a door, that door has been open. And if the Lord puts me through that door, I'm going on dialysis. For my kidneys. I'm trusting that that door has not been opened by God and it will not be opened. Well, I don't want to go on dialysis. I'm asking God to protect me. Right now, I, I got to go see a heart doctor and there's possibly a, a, a pacemaker. That kind of scares me. I want to talk to the heart doctor, maybe a couple of them. If they say that patient work maker will help me from those little heart attacks that happen quite often. Some of them are severe enough where I've had to have the limb ones. One of those trips to the, uh, the ambulance, 
They wanted to put a tube down my throat. I'm like, well, Lord, help me. I don't want that. And they gave me a shot of something, and that brought me back to being better. But they didn't have to put a tube down my throat. Why is there no tube in my throat? Because the Jews have protected me. I was in the hospital Sunday morning. And the blood work showed them that I had that CHF. I forget, something heart failure. I forget what the C is. The blood work showed them that I had a heart attack. I was released six hours later. Because my blood work showed it went down drastic. But my kidney function is still poor. But thank God, blessings of God, that he has not opened that door for dialysis, or if he has opened that door, he's not pushed me in. Because maybe that's not one door I want to go into. And there's a lot of other health problems that God has not given me. No, I'd be worthy because of my life. If you saw me, I went to two Catholic churches, St. Mary's and St. Joseph's. Both of them in New London. Grandpa would take me to St. Mary's Saturday morning, go to Mass, and on my own, I, I would go to St. Joseph, which is up on the top of my street, when we lived in London. But you know, when I went to that altar as a little boy, and I lit those candles as a little boy, I look to Jesus, and not to Jesus that the Catholics show, because they still got him down on the tree. My Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I believe that even though I was in a Catholic church, I saw with my heart and looked to and did not understand the real Jesus. Until I was 18 years old, 1987. Psalms. Four. Psalms four verse five. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Don't give God wickedness. Don't work as a bartender and giving your money from the bars and the drinks into the plate of the church. You better pray for God to get you a better, cleaner church. Don't go out and have sex with men and have them pay you You don't put that in your open book. And I said, don't you bring the higher for her. Don't bring God your gambling money. Don't give God an hour Sunday morning for the entire week. I know today in Florida here, I know, with better than Connecticut. In Florida, there are churches that have no Sunday evening service. Sunday you have a midweek service. Sometimes they go off to other churches on Sunday night. They're mixed up there in a minute. They got all these different churches like the time of Hezekiah. Bring God what is right. And put your trust in the Lord. So don't go to church and fill in the plate 
with money and you know how to trust the Lord. You don't have faith in God. You're not going to get a reward. And all you're doing is you're making God a toll booth. Alright, here's my money to pass through life. See you next Sunday. See you Christmas or Easter. That's not right. You're going to give God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What day? Every day. You're going to give God every day of your life in prayer. And studying the word of God, and reading the word of God, and witnessing. If you heard a crash, that was one of my cats. There are people. There are people who who will put money in the church, and their God is their collections. Their God is auto racing. Their God is basketball. I knew a guy one day, he would not go to church on Sunday morning when, when it was a NASCAR race. All right, God, I'll, I'll get, but if there's a race, that's more important. There are people out there, they will trust a fishing rod in Rio instead of being where they're supposed to be, with Christians. Listen, I tried to start a home church and, and uh, Holly Hill, no, not Holly Hill, uh, Daytona, South Daytona. And we met at a pavilion. And we had the nice breeze, we had lights. No one would come but one or two people and my family because it was a gazebo. We didn't meet in a building. Listen, there were toilets over there. We had great wind to give us the air conditioning from God. And we had the sun to warm us when it was cold. And we had a roof over our head if it rained. Don't go to church and think, well, God's pleased with me because here I am. No, he's not. He's not even pleased when you go to church. He is pleased when you give the sacrifice of righteousness. Yeah, you, yeah, you put money in the plate. You give him every day. And you give him the best. And you give him the honor and glory. Worthy. Of his almightiness. So, seven one. Oh Lord, my God, is he your God? Or is he your mother's God? Your grandma's God? Your girlfriend's God? Is God and Jesus Christ, are they your God? The right one? Now listen, there are people who go to Catholic Church, there are people that go to the uh, uh, Jehovah Witness, they're saved. They're in the wrong assembly. But they're saved. There are Mormons out there who go to the, to the tabernacle and they're saved. They're just in the wrong place. Oh, Lord, my God. Well, you know, I can't think of his name right now. He was a leper. And God healed him. Name it? No. I can't think of his name. 
Now he asked Elijah, so listen, can I have some dirt from Judah, the land of Judah, and when I go home, I gotta go into this this God temple with my king, the rule. It's part of my service. And all I want to do is put this dirt that when I do kneel down, I'm going to kneel down before Jehovah, the God of Israel. And may God allow my repentance for being where I am. But that's my duty. Indeed, do I put my trust, put my faith, put my guidance. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. It is proper, it is okay to pray. Oh, I'm in trouble again. Now, he may not answer right away for whatever reason. Maybe he wants you to spread it out a little bit. Maybe he wants you to get rid of your pride. Maybe he wants you to get right. I don't know. But a prayer life is coming to God with your problems. Not a psychiatrist. But listen, there may be some who need actual help from a psychiatrist. But there are some, a psychiatrist is their God. There are some Christians and they're saved but they have another God. Their employer. Oh, can't go to the new week service. They want me to work overtime. And overtime's good. We'll get extra money. And they won't give it, they won't give the Lord a dime more. I got a prayer list that I go through, and I, I there have been people, there, there, there are people in that list that I went to school with, the neighborhoods where I live, there are people that, from the street ministries I met, and, and I ain't got their name. And I will say, Lord, I don't know if these people are saved, but they're not saved, they, they need to be saved. I don't know if they're having financial troubles, if they're having marriage troubles, child troubles. Uh, medical tr I don't know what, what their condition is, Lord. I'm just going to lift their name up to you. Like I would lift up my name for I, there are some things right now in my life. Oh, God, I, I, I need help. Because it looks like <laughs> there's nothing we can do. Oh, we're going to God. That's what you do. And you pray for others. And you come to God and you confess your sins. Not other people's sins. Your sins. To be cleansed and forgiven. First John 1. Chapter 9, verse 10. They that know thy name, God, Jehovah, Jesus, will put their trust in me. But our Lord has not forsaken them that seek thee. And God won't. If you are his child, and you believe in the finished work of his son, Jesus, there are times, and I've had these times, you read them in Psalms, Lord, where are you? I, it's been a couple of times. I've laid in my bed. And I said, God, where are you? There was times I had my life. And I, I said, no, listen, you know I, I don't feel Jesus on my hand. I don't feel Jesus hugging me.
I've been many times in the way, laying in bed, laying in the hospital, I don't say, Lord, just take me home, will you? I don't know why they let me live longer. Then he reminds me of Job, that my my ends of the like Job's, I did double blessings. But you know what? When you close the book of Job, you don't ever read that Job was healed. The Bible says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Sometimes you want to feel like he did, but he didn't. He's got you on a shelf. Let's read it out. Swear it out. I want you to get ready. There's something I want you to do, get rid of in your life. Then I will do the work. Or you may not. Listen, Paul sought the Lord three times for an infirmity. He says, listen, it's grace, God's grace will suffice. No, I'm not going to take away that form. Wow, you mean God told Paul, no? I don't know what Paul said, and what I do. I'd rather be absent from this body and present with the Lord. I want. I'm ready. I'm saved. I know where I'm going to go. But <laughs> I've had it with this world. And sometimes I upset my daughter saying that. But I have. This world is a rotten, wicked, terrible, painful place. But I wake up the next day and say, Lord, I need your help. Are you going to take me or take me? I'm not as bad as I should be. I'm bad. I got a rare oxygen. Psalms 11 1. In the Lord put I my trust. I'll say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. In other words, okay, you got God as your Savior. What are you doing running to that? Was it a payday place? And you get paid by them with interest when you get your paycheck. What are you doing? You're losing money just by interest. People pawn their stuff and, and, and they get money for whatever it is. Especially if you, you're in uh, Las Vegas. In order to get their stuff back, they got to pay more than what they got. Well, you've already ruined your finances. Don't put your faith in the Lord. And proclaim to be trusting God. And you run to the bank for a loan. I'm guilty too. I financed the car and I had to give it up. I had a mortgage in the house, I had to give it up. I had to go bankrupt. I know some pastors out there, oh, wicked sin, wicked sin. Now, I made bad decisions. I went to, I, I recently, as I can't do the checkbook no more, it's, you know, talking about, you know, I can't do, my daughter does it. And I, I sat and prayed to her and said, Lord, don't ever trust me with money again. Because I can't handle it. Right. If there's one thing I am not faithful to you, Lord, is handling a paycheck. I don't use the money right. How's that coming to God? And by doing that, listen, I am praying that God will take care of my needs. 
and he hasn't. There were times when I did the checkbook, I would look at that checkbook, I would do it twice. And still come up with those areas where it is extra money come from. I must have screwed up somewhere. No, God did it. It's amazing how God can take little and add much. Exactly what the Bible says. I've seen it. I can testify it. God's not forsaking you. Psalms 11, 1. In the Lord put I my trust. I'm like, if we do that one. So don't go running off to somebody else, to something else. Waste your money. Waste your time. If you proclaim that faith in the Lord. Many churches get in trouble because they go and get a loan, a mortgage. Eighteen two. Psalms eighteen two. The Lord is my rock, there it is again, and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God. There's Jesus and God. My strength. Oh boy, look at that. There are people that go to the gym, they do weights, they do all these things, they curls and and they can, they can fight, they can box, they can jog blocks. And I work for the newspaper, and you go out 3 o'clock in the morning, and they want them, I see these same people. No matter what the weather is, I see these same people, approximately the same spot, jogging. And they probably give the credit to their drink, their pill. Their potion. And not God. I hear these guys at church too. You know, what did you do when you went to the place? How much did you lift and all that? Oh, I lived, I lived 100 pounds and with no credit to God. This nation and the world broke to pieces. You're talking about almost a worldwide closing with a real virus called COVID. And I got COVID two or three times. That one little cell, whatever COVID is, and it got in my body. Whew. Where was my strength? <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't do nothing. I had no strength. Now this is a little flu. There are Christians today in a hospital bed. They will be in a hospital bed the rest of their life. They're probably poor warriors. Sure. In whom I will trust, okay. So, strength has been added. With walk and fortress and deliver. And trust. And faith. My buckler. Now, what's the buckler? That's your belt buckle. That keeps your pants up. You know what happens when you fornicate, you go out and have premarital sex, and you got to pull your pants down? God's not your buckler. Lady, if God was your buckler, you would keep that zipper, that dress on, those pants on, and let God buckle you and say, no, you got to get married first. And for everyone that, that gets pregnant and they're not married and they don't have a husband, 
They took their buckler off. They had no buckler of God. The pants came down. You know what the schools are teaching these children today? Pull your pants down, take off God. Pull your pants down, don't have, don't have your buckle. Just put a condom on. Take this pill. Now they got a pill that if you do get pregnant, you take this pill and you get that and get your abortion. How convenient. You think God's going to bless the world? with a pharmaceutical breakthrough when you got pills for abortion. You would legalize marijuana. You know, there are some drugs today that you could go with a prescription and get at your pharmacy. But you can't get them today. They can't make them. They don't make them. There's a high demand. That's going to happen even more and more and more. There was almost a threat during the, the, the crisis of uh, COVID-9, COVID was it? Or COVID-6, whatever. COVID. And they were talking about when I was in the hospital. They were going to run out of antibiotics. And they were afraid what was going to happen. If they could not produce an antibiotic, even though they overuse antibiotics. One of the conditions of many things wrong with me, you know, diabetes, number one, which is my fault, but lately my kidneys are bad because all the antibiotics I've had through my life, I've had a lot of them. Keep your buckle on until you marry her. Then you can be allowed to take off your buckle in your pants. But even still, keep your buckle on and trust God and thank God if you get your wife pregnant. And bring that child up from the womb My wife, when she was pregnant for, for both my son and my daughter, she would play hymns up to her belly. And she said that both the babies, when they're going through different times, she said both the babies would be so calm. A horn of my salvation, there's that horn again, and there's the salvation. Let all these verses together and see what faith, see what trust is. And my high tower knows a high tower. As for God, his way is perfect. The Democrat way is not perfect. The Republican way is not perfect. The way of the Supreme Court is not perfect. The reign of King Charles, I looked him in prayer and his family, is not perfect. The word of God is tried. People are always will question it. Listen, they put questions in hey, which version should I use? What's wrong with my Bible version? I got this Bible, I will never change. They take the word God and they put it under a microscope. Some people read the Bible just to find fault. He is a buckler, there it goes, to all the to those yeah, to all those that trust in him. Keep your pants on. I wear suspenders now because my belt went not work. If I, get, if I get a certain position, I still use my pants. Some trust in chariots. 
Oh, we got a great military for it. We got a great submarine. We got, you know, the, the, the SEAL team, and we got, you know, the, the Blue Tiger, and we got, you know, these airplanes. We got all the air, aircraft carrier. We got battleships. That's not answering the world crisis. You know, our, our soldiers gave us freedom. Freedom? How come I got to go to the city hall and get a permit from the city hall after I pay them to do something on my property? There are people in Deland, Florida, that if you have a tree in your lot and you want to remove it, you can't. I don't care what kind of permit you get. If they say that tree can't be moved, that tree is not going to be moved. I know in the building project they had, there was a tree that was right in the middle of where they're going to build the building. And they had to design an end cut of that building to protect that tree. You want to be a Christian, and you want to be a true Christian, and you're not married yet. Keep your buckle on. You are married, and you are with somebody else. Keep your buckle on. America has a buckle and zipper problem. And some people just go run to the abortion clinic. For the king trusts us in the Lord, verse 7. I wish we had a president trusting the Lord. I don't know about King Charles if he trusted the Lord. Twenty-eight, seven. Psalm 28 7, the Lord is my strength, there it goes again, strength, my shield, there's the shield, my heart, not your head, not your wallet, the heart, your emotions, who you are, my heart trusts within, I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I praise him. Why? Why are you happy? Why are you rejoicing? Why do you have a song? Why are you praising God? Because you trust him. Trusting the Lord brings rejoicement, it brings help, it brings song, it brings praise. It is your strength. It is your shield. It's from the heart. If what you're doing is not from your heart, don't do it no more. Listen, Paul says, God does not want somebody to give grudgingly. Oh, I'm going to get the church. I don't can't believe what the church says. With. I've been in churches where, I mean, they, where they put that money. I said, I'm not doing it. I would give the money to missionaries. But I don't believe our church would have been spending money. You know what happened to usually when I did that? I pray, God give me another church. Thirty-one six. I have hated. Then that regard lying vanity. Do you hate, and I, have, I know a lot of people, they get involved in these scams. And there's all kinds. And they get short of their money, of their finances.
and the Raiders and the Souls, I, I hate them. They're just stupid. I had an uncle, he, he got in trouble, he, he, he started giving you know, this guy the money, you know, supposedly, if he came up with a certain amount of money, they were going to give him something, whatever it was. And he was giving him money, and he was giving him money, and he was giving him money, and he knew it was a scam, and he's still giving him money. I know people in my family that have been scammed. And they know it. They go to the casino. You don't go to the casino and expect him to win a million bucks. Casinos would run out of money. They would run out of business. You're not going to win at a casino. And if you do it, I'm mad at you. I know a Christian. He, he go every morning because they had that free buffet and then he would you know, he, I think it was twenty dollars on the stock. That's all he would pay. Still, if you came home twenty dollars less in your wallet, you wasted your money. Things are not going to work out when you keep on having a minus in finances, especially a minus when there's no need. But I trust in the Lord. And that's why I'm not for Listen. What's it say? If it sounds too good, it's not true. Something like that. It's true. Listen, I've had things like, oh yeah, wait a minute. I can't be right. I thought we for jobs. I've gone to a job and they'd be like, what the heck is this? If you put your trust in the Lord, I want to see something in your mind. You trust in the Lord and you seek God. And you go to God with your troubles. He'll keep you out of the way with you. Verse 19, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, and there's fear, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. So another thing you get in trusting in the Lord and fearing God is you get, and you don't ever hear anybody talk about this one, I mean, you talk about the mercy and, and grace. No one really talks about the goodness of God. What is the goodness of God? So, sometimes it's something you don't know that God did. It kept you out of the hospital. It kept you from the speeding ticket. I mean, you could be driving down the road and right? you had a green light. Boom. The reason why you were late because you were running around the house and, and you forgot this and you forgot that and, and you had to find that paper and you couldn't find that paper. Because maybe God stalled you. Because had you left at the time that you used your left, maybe that guy would have ran that red light and nailed you. Have you ever been somewhere and gone home and turned on the news? And I haven't, but where you were that day, there was a shooting, there was a murder, there was some kind of ruckus, and you have left that place? I was, I was, I was underage, and I was working for this pizza joint, and I was, I take these flyers with somebody, and we go put the flyers on people's door, and I, I was paid for it. And I didn't know nothing then. And I saw in the back room they had this bag. I thought it was a regular. I was wrong. And one day we returned back and the police were there. And one of the police officers, he says, son, what are you doing? 
I said, oh, you know, they pay me, and I, I showed him the flyers. He says, Listen, do me a favor, son. I said, what, what officer? Give respect. Go somewhere else. Go home, go, you know, go play somewhere. Go, don't, I mean, don't be here. And don't come back anymore. I said, okay. And I heard on the news, or somebody was talking about, they were, sm they were smelling. They were selling marijuana out of the back room. Those bags were, were living a way down. They were drugs. And God had that police officer. I mean, I could have gone to jail. I can imagine minor involved in, with, 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 with uh, marijuana. That cop said, just go somewhere else. And let me go. And he didn't ask me if I knew the stuff was there. Because I'd say, well, I knew there was something there. I just didn't know what it was. Being honest, they got me in trouble. Accessory. Thank you for that. There was another time I was handcuffed by whatever put me in jail. A guy protected me. And then many times in my life when I look back, man, I tell you, for the grace of God, I don't know what happened. But God did something. I don't know if, I don't know if there's guardian angels. But if there was, and there is, I was protected. Don't trust in my man. Don't trust in the news. Don't trust the government. They lied to you. Okay, where am I at? Thirty two ten Psalms. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusts in the Lord, mercy, okay, there's mercy, shall compass him about. Well, that doesn't say you're going to be sorrow, sorrowless. I don't know that's the word. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, if you put your faith and trust in God, you're going to get a million dollars, you're going to get the greatest job, you're going to have, that's a bunch of boom. If, if that promise is true, for my health condition today, God would be a liar, and God doesn't lie. The Bible says in four places, he cannot and will not lie. Well, I guess that preacher lied. Mercy comes from trusting the Lord. 34.8 Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless is the man that trusteth in him. There's blessing. We just saw mercy. Now we see blessing. We saw goodness. Now we get blessing. All because we trust in him. I'm not going to say, listen, you're not going to be false. Last week, starting on Tuesday, I was sick as a dog. I was spit up, and I ended up to I was throwing up. And my daughter was greatly concerned because I had not eaten anything, I couldn't keep it down, and I had not drinking anything. And I couldn't take my pills. She kept on telling me, I'm going to take you to the hospital. She said, you throw up, I'm taking you to the hospital, you're dehydrated. Sunday morning, I was throwing up. I said, I want to go to church. She said, you got to go to the hospital. I got to the point, I said, okay, let's go to the hospital. I got dressed, she took me to the hospital. I had a CHF, you know, the heart failure. And they gave me a full bottle 
of IV solution. I was dehydrated. And I was able to drink a couple of ice water before they before let me go. I came home, I think my daughter made me lunch or something. I ran the meal, they gave out a try, and I, I ate it slowly. Now I'm eating all the wheels. Don't say all your problems are going to end when you get saved. That's not true. Don't believe it, okay? 112. One hundred twelve verse seventeen. That's not it. Seven. Verse seven. Excuse me. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Your heart is broken. It's desperately wicked. Trusting in the Lord. We've had a couple of times in my life, Connecticut Airport. We had a couple of times where cops came up to the door and knocked on me. Or I was sitting in the park out in the street and started walking. I don't. I ain't went and hide. One time it was a close that when we had our street ministry, I guess somebody involved in a crime asked us or something. And they wanted to know if I saw, which I didn't. And there was another time that, you know, they got this complaint, whatever it was. And if you trust in the Lord and you do right, according to Romans 13, you don't need to fear the law. And Paul wrote that in a time of war, where Christians were being persecuted. Now, during that time, if the police or the government was coming to your doorstep, and you were a Christian, well, going to the faggots, going to be tortured, is not evil. When it's for the cause of Christ. Now, if you're driving down the road and you've broken the speed limit or going through a red light, and those red and blue lights, you better fear. Because you're going to have to take money out of your wallet for a ticket. And I go, oh God, I'm going to get me on this train I don't want this ticket and all that. Well, you shouldn't pay attention to your speed on them. You should pay attention to that light was red. Fifteen verse, 115 verse 9. O Israel, God's people, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. There's a healthy shield. There's one particular people. Israel. God's people. The proper saying is God bless Israel, not America. God don't care about America. America's not in the Bible. America's not about Americans. It's about the Jewish, Hebrew, Israel land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're of Ishmael, you're not God's people. So there's a hope and shield for a nation. Look at verse 10. O house of Aaron, that will be the priest. Trust in the Lord, he is their hope and their shield. Repeat it. All right, here's to a family, which we call the Levites. The priests. All priests were Levites, but not all Levites were priests, and is blessed those people. Verse 11. He that feared the Lord, there's the fear of the Lord, 
Trust in the Lord. He shall be their help. There's a heel. Oh, again, three times. And their shield. Again. We've seen that shield. We've seen the faith of that shield. And the help. Psalms 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in Donald Trump. Man. Well, he is a elite military group. Now, they, they're about to wipe that out. Doctor. You can trust a doctor like Asa instead of the Lord. I try to remember every time I'm going to a doctor, and I have problems, you know, or something, I start seeking the Lord. Sometimes I'll seek the Lord even before something has happened, and I know something's going to happen. Some people have confidence in Joe Biden. Some people have confidence in their ball game, their, bo their, their team, their child, their boss, their spouse, their mother, their father. It is better, verse 9, to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, the government people. If you are a Christian, you ought not to be trusting Donald Trump. Right, vote for him, okay. But how come you're out there more for your Democrat, more for your Republican, than you are for Jesus? I was in another church one time, and this was like, all he would talk about was politics. And he would pay for this billboard for this guy who was running for election. I was another guy in another church, and you know, here's this petition, here's this, what this Democrat believes, what this Republican, and all that man said. And it's funny, after the elections, the pastor had given him all open door. After the election, he and his family never came back to the church. He was only at church for political reasons. A lot of your black churches, they will meet, and it's more of a political meeting than it is a Jesus. And that was Psalm 118. Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. You know, your heart is divided into four equal parts, and I don't know what the name is. There's two up and two, up, two in the bottom. You can give the Lord half your heart. You can give the Lord a quarter of your heart. Like I said, I know somebody who was an NASCAR race, he wouldn't go to church. So he wasn't giving the Lord all his heart. There are people who hold back on the Lord. I know many, you know, their child has a softball games or practice on the midweek service for church, and they won't go to church. The softball team is better. The dance class is better. Overtime is better. And that's not that's not trusting the Lord in your heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. I've blown that one many times. And got myself in a financial. Oh, I can do it. Oh, the sign my, my signature. Yeah. I'm so good I get myself into trouble. There's sometimes I, when I go in the bathroom, I got that mirror there, I look at me and say, you're the troublemaker. Be 
because I trusted in me. I trusted in man and not God. I left that out. And I promote to be a Christian. And there are things in my life as a Christian I had to say, well, you know what? I trusted my own understanding. Boy, did I get in trouble. Preaching to myself again. 1620. Father of 1620. He that handles a, a matter wisely shall find good. Who so trusts in the Lord, happy is he. You want to be happy? Trust in the Lord. Now, did I say your life is going to be one way? No. I had some great times in the hospital when I was feeling better with the nurses. And I would joke around and I'd get gospel tracks out to them. You can be happy in, in, in terrible and wicked times. When my, when my wife Lisa died, I was talking to my mom, and I just found out my mom got saved. And it really didn't dawn on me. You know, you know my wife died, you know. And about, it was a little time after that, I called my mom again, see how things are going. And she said, you know, I can't believe it. Well, she just got saved. I said, what? Well, she says, you know, your wife just died. She was saved. She was a wonderful, great woman, Lisa was. You seem so calm, cool, and collected. And I'm saying to myself to my heart, I was not. But Christ in me, the goodness, the mercy, And happy because the Lord trusts in them. The Lord's trust gave me happiness. It gave me goodness. Even times of trouble. 29 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Oh, you know, Joe Biden gets the president, we're all going to make him, you know. If I call out, I'm, I, you know, my boss is not going to work and I'm going to get in trouble. Huh? You have to call out. We're in a day and age today, if you get sick, they tell you to call out. I don't want to be around that guy at church because I talk about him. Don't talk about him. A snare is a trap that catches you by your feet. But whoso, whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. The value is you get to be safe. Happiness, safe, mercy, grace, goodness, Protection, a sure foundation, someone who looks out for you, someone who protects you, and someone who will help you because you put your trust in them. I mean, does all this match trusting a human? Trusting a politician? A doctor? A lawyer? No. These are the, some of the attributes of God because you trust God. Isaiah 12. Verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Anxiety. No anxiety if you trust the Lord. 
For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, there it is again, my song, there it goes again, and has become my salvation. Look at how many times trust and salvation come together. There is no anxiety. You get anxiety if you get out of trust in God. There's the strength, there's the song, and there's salvation. Alright, Jeremiah 13. Jeremiah 13, 24. This is thy law. The portion of thy measure from me, saith the Lord. Because thou hast forgotten me and trust in the falsehood. Who the people put their faith and trust in the news? Noah. National Oceanic something something. The Democrats. The Republicans. The stock market. They trust the false news. They're more faithful to turn the TV or the radio for the news than they are at their bank. When I deliver newspapers, they would be customers mad when they went out to get their newspaper. It wasn't there yet. They could not start their day without looking at the bank. You think they would pray to the Lord? You think they would give that much effort to read in their Bible? Verse 7, 17, 17. Blessed is the man, happy is the man, that's what blessed means, that trusts in the Lord and who hope the Lord. There's not happiness, but blessed. A blessing. You want blessing from God? You want to be happy from, with God in your life? Trust God. You know, if, if you don't have the happiness, you don't have the joy, you don't have anything we've been talking about. Look at how you trust in God. There may be a problem. Who are you trusting? That's the problem. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord is good. Yes, He is. There's a goodness. A stronghold. There's that tower. There's that rock. In the day of trouble. He knows them that trust Him. Alright, we've already seen in verse. Alright, He won't forsake you. Here, Nahum says, He knows you. He knows you by name because your name is written down in the Lord's book of life. Does he hear from you? Do you call upon him often? There are people who they don't they don't they got parents, they don't call. They are Christians who don't call on God. But he knows you. Philippians 2. Nineteen. But I trust in the Lord Jesus. Alright, there's, there's trust in you. The sentence of Morpheus shall answer you that I also may be of good comfort and I know your state. So Paul is saying, listen, 
if Timothy is going to be going to Philippi, Paul is praying to God, Jesus, in the trust for Timothy and his travel mercy. You know someone's going to be traveling? Do you know you're maybe going traveling? Do you trust the Lord Jesus to give you a safe journey? Do you pray for that airplane, that train, or that trip someone's making? Or you're going to make? And then Philippians 2.24 but I trust in the Lord, that I also shall come shortly. So Paul put his trust in his travel plans. And he would trust that if it's for the good, hopefully God will bless it.